G'day Stephen, welcome back. Hi Tom, how are you? Yeah, well thanks mate, well thanks. Uh, today we're looking at uh, component diagrams, are we? Yeah, that's right Tom, we're going to look at uh, component diagrams, logical components of how basically how system, uh, how system works, how it hangs together. Okay, sounds cool. Yeah, so the first thing we're going to do as always is to set our perspective which gives us, gives the tool the focus on what we're doing. A component diagram is a UML structural diagram, so we're going to change to the structural perspective there. I am looking at my project browser over here, which is the, the repository, and I'm going to create a new package for the component diagram, and we'll call it the component model. I'll move it down in uh, the list because it's a lower level thing than many of these other diagrams. Tom, in earlier videos, we created, uh, we looked at requirements for, um, for our parking meter system, so an urban parking meter system, we had requirement requirements there, we had uh, a class model um, that described some of the important entities uh, in our system, and uh, we also um, created uh, a use case model that uh, showed the, the value that particular actors were getting out of, out of the, this parking meter system, and we also uh, did create a state machine diagram. So, if anyone hasn't seen those videos, um, you can go back and look at those. I'm going to close all of those uh, things at the moment there. So I'll um, close all there. And I'm going to look at my um, component model now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a component diagram. So here we have the list of diagram types and we're going to say a component diagram. And we'll accept the default name there. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is to drag uh, some components on uh, to the screen and let's say the first thing is a what we'll call a, a meter controller which is the component that is going to be the central uh, the, the, the central unit that's going to control everything else that's going on so we've got our uh, meter controller there i'm just going to um, click here now and we can see i've popped up another component there which i'm going to call what you do there um tom that's using a what i call a one of the productivity features of uh, enterprise architect i simply held the control key down and left click my mouse and it uh, creates another element the same type of as the previous element so i had created the meter controller i hold the control key down click and uh, i've got um, a new element automatically it's a, so, a very powerful feature so is that the way to like rapidly create lots and lots of elements of the same type does it absolutely tom that's the, that's the point of it and sometimes with these these type of uh, diagrams, structural diagrams, you are creating lots of uh, lots of different elements. So let's um, let's do just get a few elements uh, onto the diagram. We'll do the same thing there. Um, this is a time manager, so time is obviously important with a uh, with a meter meter system. So and I'll put in the display unit as well. Uh, and let's um, let's have a look at these elements. Um, we've just lined them up a little bit there using the uh, using the guide guidelines there. Uh, the the thing that I might want to do now is uh, to connect some of these elements up, and there are different ways uh, to connect connect these. One of the ways that we can do it is simply using um, an association to uh, to connect these things. We'll do that for the display unit to the meter controller, and we'll do it from the um, from the time the meter controller to the time one. And I can just drag that down. If you notice what happened there, Tom, I held the F3 key down and I dragged, and that does a similar thing to what we were doing with uh, the components by holding the uh, control key and placing them there. That uh, F3 key allows me to uh, repeat the last connector. So again, when I'm doing multiple connectors of the same type, I can simply hit the F3 key and that will uh, tell Enterprise Architect to use the same type of connector. Right. Uh, so what I'm, what I, what I, another thing I want to show you here is, uh, is which is a, a very useful thing to do in when you're modelling these uh, these systems, is to use the uh, something that's in the features uh, window here, and if I select this uh, meter controller class, if you look down at the features window, there are a number of different panels: the attributes, the operations, the receptions, parts and properties. We'll use a number of these. But what I want to do is talk about the responsibilities. So this is a very useful thing to do um, with a uh, with any 
element, particularly components and classes, where you can put in a description of what the responsibility of that uh, of that element is, in this, case, in this case, the component. So it manages all aspects of time, including the session duration. So I put that into the wrong element. Let me just change that. It's very simple to do that. I'll just colleagues like that. That's the time manager I should be putting in the responsibility for. I'll just um, that window back there, and I'll drop him into the middle of that one. So um, let's have a look at this responsibility. Um, and manages all aspects of time, including uh, sessions duration and expiry. Uh, so Stephen, so in, in one of the earlier videos, we've actually added more detail to one of the elements by using the notes fields and, yeah. and some of the properties, but it looks yeah. like there's other areas in Enterprise Architect for structured information to go into as well. Yeah, Tom, the the, uh, the opportunity to put structured information in is, is uh, incredibly important. Uh, and that, that's what separates Enterprise Architect um, from you know conventional uh, drawing tools is that the information that's going in isn't just pretty pictures and and, and text it is like you said uh, structured and so I could have put that in the in the notes but it uh, given that there's a already a a, a uh, feature there to be able to put the responsibility in there it makes it much easier for people to uh, understand the tool but you notice that hasn't displayed in the diagram and that's kind of intentional but I can um, look at this compartments window here and um, display those things. So it's um, a type of requirement, so I can display that. And you notice there that that, um, that element now is, is displaying it. But I have an opportunity here uh, also uh, by looking at the uh, compartment visibility to say I want to wrap that feature and don't want it just to, uh, to go out because it could be very long in fact. And so what I can do now is, um, is I can um, change the the shape of that element and so it's uh, much easier to read and doesn't take up the entire diagram so that's a that's a very uh, very useful feature looking what at I'm some going of to... those oh sorry so said looking at some of those options that that were available there it looks like we're only just scratching the surface of, of what enterprise architect can do there, there was some there were some things there <laughs> yeah tom uh it, it's incredibly powerful and and you know that's one of the things one of the reasons why um, while I'm doing this modeling today is to be able to try and share some of the real power of Enterprise Architect and also the, the ease of use. Uh, so it's very, as you can see, it's very easy to create quite complex models or, or models of complex systems um, and uh, for users to be able to, um, to look at those models and understand the system and not fall into um, you know, traps during design or, um, or implementation. So. Um, they can see these things in advance and understand uh, what they're about. I want to show you um, something else here now, which is um, interfaces. So we've just connected these other elements with a simple association, but I'm going to show you one of them in um, a little bit more detail. Now this payment system uh, has, um, a, typically it's a logical component at the moment, but it typically would be uh, a component that might be purchased or, or, um, uh, or, or you know, um, used by um, an organization rather than building it themselves. What we're going to do is drop this exposed interface on here and we're going to call it, um, we're going to say that it's a provided interface and we'll just call it the payment interface for the moment. And what that does is uh, it puts this kind of lollipop shape uh, thing on here. And then the other thing we can do is we can drop um, another interface on here. And this time, this meter control is not providing it, it's requiring an interface. Um, and we'll call this the payment one as well at the moment. And uh, there we have um, those two uh, connectors. Now, instead of connecting them with a, an association, what I'm gonna do is use an information flow. So I'm gonna select this element and you notice the quick linker, uh, quick linker icon comes up. I'm gonna drag that across. I'm not gonna drop it onto the class. I'm gonna drop it onto the interface. So um, here we have that and I'm gonna say it's an information flow. Now, a little window pops up that allows me um, to define the payload of what's going uh, across that connection between, um, uh, you know, between these two elements, the meter control and the payment system. So I can go add there. And this is a very important part of uh, modeling that I want to try and get across. When, you, when you're drawing pictures in a, in a drawing package, there's not any opportunity for reuse or to try and articulate your model together. It's like a, you know, a, um, a bag of bones, if you like. Whereas when you're doing things in Enterprise Architect, what you're trying to do is to create 
um, you know, an articulated um, an articulated model. So in the example, you know, a bag of bones versus a, uh, a, an articulated skeleton where, where the joints are all, the bones are all connected and you can see the way that they move together. So we're gonna use something that we've uh, created earlier. And the thing that might be going across there is the payment. So we're gonna reuse something from our class model and um, we're gonna apply that uh, as the payload uh, for this information flow. And you can see um, that pops up uh, there, which is, uh, which is very powerful. Um, so the, um, the other thing that we, um, we, we can do is that we can put in a, what, an interface. So these things were, uh, were, um, were these, these were exposed interfaces. And what we want to do is to put in a definition um, of those interfaces. So what we'll do is we'll drag an interface element uh, from the browser and we'll call it um, we'll call it the payment interface and um, again we go down to our features window and we're going to um, look at um, the features and we're going to put some operations uh, in here so one of the things we're going to do first in the payment in this payment interface is we have to validate that the users are using um, a correct card so we'll put this in here and we'll say validate card and we'll put in a parameter there uh, and um, the parameter will be um, card number or something like that and we'll put in the type of um, if we'll just put in a um, integer will do there and let's go back into this um, so you see now that that pops up into uh, our interface and the other one that we might want to do is uh, process payment so we'll again put that um, put that interface uh, operation in there and we'll call it um, that and we might have a type already set up there that's called um, uh, that's called payment and the you know the value might be um, might be money in here so we might have a, a type already set up there and it's called money um, so there we have that there now, <clears throat> that's very uh, useful but it's not connected to any other parts of our model so what we can do now is we can go back and look at this element here, this uh, this provided interface, and we can uh, we can apply the interface that we've just created to this um, to this exposed interface. So we'll go to the properties window there, and uh, instead of um, this text that we put in, again we're trying to articulate our model, and we'll go in and we'll look uh, for that. And it was under our component model, and there it conveniently pops up with the little icon showing that it's an interface, and um, we'll have that uh, there. And now it's applied to that um, to that exposed interface. It's amazing how connected everything can be once you start deploying these systems. Yeah, it absolutely is, uh, Tom. That's exactly right. It, it, the connection is what novice, uh, I guess, novice modelers, um, you know, they're, they're, it's new to them, and so. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying being able to show people uh, some of the sort of the, the, the deeper arts of how, how to model these things. So one of the things we'll do as well is in this media controller, we'll put another operation in there and we'll say, you know, calculate um, payment um, and, you know, we can put some um, parameters in there and, you know, the parameters might be, um, you know, um, uh, something like um, um, calculate payment might be um, session time session times and you know we can make some decisions about the kind of um, naming conventions that we uh, want so we'll put in here um, again we could have a, a, a time already uh, parameter type already set up there so we're going to do that uh, and that's a um, that's a good example of um, how to use this um, <coughs> how to use uh, component models to create uh, valuable representations of you know what's connected uh, to everything else. So uh, let me just have a look at this. Find that in your browser. Um, what I like to do as well, Tom, is put a um, a legend onto the um, onto the diagram. And I had uh, I had a legend um, set up uh, previously. And so what I might do is um, is paste that legend onto the um, there. And then I might apply that legend um, onto this um, diagram. And oh, wow. Hang on a minute. 
so you've created a legend somewhere else or you're reusing a legend from another diagram and That's right. the second you dropped it on it retained all its information set all the colors and styled it the way that myself or my organization wanted to yeah, that's exactly right. It, wow. it sort of almost, it almost looks like magic, right? You, you look at it and you think, and again, this is another thing with novice users and what I'm trying to get across in, in, uh, in these sessions is that often there are lots and lots of different ways to do things in an enterprise architect. Uh, and that's, a, that's you know, an in, in, the intention by the, uh, by the product designers. But there are also incredibly powerful ways uh, of doing things. So uh, what I want to get across is that if you're setting your colors manually, and you can do that, I can, I can set a color manually by just you know, clicking on an element, going to the layout ribbon, choosing a color from here and applying it, right? But with the legends, uh, you, get all of that, um, you get all of that for nothing, right? And you're right, I, I, can, I can create a library of legends and I can just reuse them not only across the same project but across um, many projects that, that um, in the project browser and I can copy them between different repositories as well if I had another repository I can just simply uh, copy that uh, legend element and we'll see uh, in a future uh, video some of the reasons why uh, we went about putting that um, payment interface on and that would be something that will um, really help us when we're drawing um, interaction diagrams in a future video. I'll look forward to it. That, that sounds amazing. All right. Well, that's all. That's all I wanted to to, uh, to cover today, Tom, in this session. Well, thanks very much, for that Stephen. That that was uh, really informative. It's it's interesting to see as this series progresses, just uh, how much more uh, features we're we're opening up with Enterprise Architect. Um, for all those watching our series, uh, pl please join us. So like, comment. Uh, subscribe, uh, join us uh, as we uh, continue down uh, into the, the depths of Enterprise Architect. See you in the next video. <laughs> Thanks, Tom.